The 1960 Chevy Custom Fleet Slide coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Welcome back, truck model kit lovers. Today we are going to open up a great kit. This is the 1960 Chevy Fleet Side from AMT Ertl. Now, I know Round 2 has re released this kit recently and brand new boxing and everything else all fancy. So this model is still in circulation out there in Model Land. <laughs> However, this edition here is the actual first edition of this kit that was ever produced back in around 2003-ish. So without further ado, we are going to look at it tonight and I am going to show you personally what's in the box. But before we do that, let's try to get this video up to 100 likes so that it'll hit the top of the Google search engines and more and more people can see our great unboxing and introduce more people into the hobby world. That would be awesome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Click the notification bell so that when I open up the next box, you are one of the first people to see it. Now let's go down to our table and open the lid on this beauty. Now we step back in time again to 1960 with this amazing Chevy Custom Fleet Side by AMT. Now this model kit was built in 1998, well, came into production. So we have some little features here. This is still, of course, under the RC2 label, but uh, they show a nice wheel and a wheel arch. The Chevy Straight 6 under here, and a side profile of this vehicle. It is a skill level 2 for ages 10 and up. Glue and paint is required. And look, look ma, 100 parts in this amazing model. Really, really cool. When we turn here on this side, we get, of course, the top of the box. And here is a good rear three quarter of the built model. And of course, you can always phone this number if you have any questions, or at least you could in 1998. I don't know about now. Somebody try it, let us know. <laughs> okay, and of course, our barcode on this side. So, if we take off the lid here, the first thing we get are the instructions. Now we'll be looking at these kit parts in further detail as this video goes on, but for now I'm moving the box out of the way at the bottom. I'm zooming the camera all the way out and we're going to take a look briefly at these instructions. Now of course you get a picture of the real truck with the nice fleet side script there and a call out sheet for all the paints you are going to need. A is gloss black, B is gold, C is silver, D is flat black, E aluminum, F steel, G light blue, H wood brown, J chrome silver, K is gloss white, L is charcoal gray, M is gloss gray, X is the exterior color, and Z, or Z, is ivory. Anyway, we will open this up and take a look. Now, they start with the Chevy Straight 6. Very good, very reliable engine back in the day. They give you three panels of the engine going together. So there you can see like the G in the box and that should be your Chevy engine orange. Actually, they call for light blue. So they were using light blue on the Chevy engines, the straight six anyway, for this year, for the trucks. So, you get a left and right hand side engine block and oil pan and valve cover at the top. Your uh, water pump pulley and timing chain. And then of course you get your belts and your fan, the distributor, starter motor, coil, and these other little goodies. And then your intake manifold sitting on the driver's side. Two barrel carburetor, air cleaner, intake, and exhaust, and of course your generator. Then you got these very nice wheels. They're using the old Firestones again. Narrow Firestones. And the wheel backings, separate wheel backings, so that the wheel revolves around the axle there. Okay, so then in the next panel, there's all the callouts for the body colors. 
and here just below shows you what the two-tone looks like and how to paint it. Of course across the back or you can build this as mono color. They should also have the interior. Oh no, that's just okay, that's all in the different languages. Alright, never mind. So there's your undercarriage going together, the spare tire underneath the car, and of course the front steering suspension and components. And then we get, we get two panels of that with the engine and transmission and exhaust pipes going in there as well as the shock absorbers and then the wheels and tires going on at the very last step. Then it moves into the interior in our instruction sheet and you'll notice much like the 59 Ford retractable these have panels that glue in there so you can paint all the detail and then glue the the panels on top which is a nice way to do that. It's got a seat here, not quite posable like in the 53 Chevys. Separate side panels, back panels, and tub, steering wheel. Okay, and then turning it over, we finish off the exterior. Now they have a separate roof panel that pops on here because I think there is a little bit of overhang. They couldn't address that in the molding process very nicely, so they decided to add an extra piece on there. Then your engine bay, two pieces of glass, front and rear, your mirror, separate radiator, and three-piece radiator shroud, well, including radiator. Then you get this back panel in here, and your interior firewall, everything going in. Um, then there's your pickup bed with the tailgates. Even shows you how to hook up the chains where it goes, how to paint them. Maybe not hook them up, but at least how to paint them. Then just close that off. We get into the body, chassis, and bed assembly going together. There's a radiator hose that goes in here to the radiator. That's they're showing it there. Then of course you're adding in your battery and the radiator hose components, that sort of thing. Then it shows you how to paint those chrome pieces which insert into the hood. And the hood is a two-piece, again, because of the complex curves. Makes it difficult to, to manufacture in the molding process. And you get these optional hood springs to hold your hood up, which goes into the fenders there. And of course your bumpers and license plates. So, now that this has got you all excited, Let's take a look at the actual kit parts. And here we go, checking out the parts of our 1960s Chevy Custom Fleece Side by AMT Ertl. Okay, so I've tried to uh, position the cab and the pickup bed so that you can see what the car would look like, truck would look like, pardon me. But they are actually two separate units. So let's just move the pickup bed out of the way and push the truck body back up here. Ooh, a dragging sound. So as you can see, we've got a pretty nice body here. Uh, there it is from all these different angles, of course. Now you may hear some background noise. We actually have some new people in the building. There's a body shop guy downstairs and a nail and beauty salon person down the other set of stairs. So it's kind of interesting here in this body. You can see that there's this metal panel in here, sort of like sunken in. Um, and it's got a uh, smaller window glass right there. I guess if you wanted to build this sort of more custom, you could take your hobby knife and cut along here you know, along this edge of this sunk-in part and put a full window in here. I don't know. Anyway, maybe that's not how the real truck is. Okay, so if you look up close here, you can see this nice Chevrolet fleet side type script here. Or, what does it say? I can't see it here. Oh, a pet. Okay, so it says Chevrolet Apache 10 on that. And you can always paint that a very nice paint brush, very fine, like a 5 over 0 or 20 over 0. And your chrome paint, once you paint the body, of course. Notice the nice uh, insert here, your vents and your windshield wipers. 
molded in. So the way they did it in the older days. Same with the molded on door handle, so not separate, but nice detail. The vents up here, of course, too. And then there's a section, two sections in here that say remove on them. So you'll need to cut those with your hobby saw, and I suggest turning it over and cutting it here. Of course, there's some sink marks there, which you'll need to take out with your number 16 hobby knife. And of course, straighten up the bottom where it was molded to the parts tree. But look at that headliner in there. You can see the nice pleats in there. Very cool. The ribs, I guess. I don't know if there's actually a headliner in there or if it's just metal ribs on the real truck, I mean. So, very cool. Okay, and then there, these two holes are for that auxiliary roof section that comes in. So now let's move this out of the way and let's examine that pickup truck bed. And of course there you've got your rails and your wood insert. I don't know if the camera can pick this up too well. But there is wood grain in between each of these ribs. And your bare metal foil on top there would look really wonderful on the chrome rails. And of course paint inside. Got all the rivets and bolts and stuff for those fender aprons. Of course the back here. No scripts along the side. But underneath it's nice wood detail that you'll be able to see through the frame of the truck when you turn the truck upside down, of course. Very good, very nice detail. Oh, one thing I should point out here. On the truck, there's a big open hole here. There is a panel that glues into that, so it covers the hole. Now let's look at some of the other great parts. And next up, our parts tree here, we've got our interior panel, and this is the back. I guess you don't glue that part of it on, it's molded to the frame, or to the inside. So here you, you see these little square things. That's where the seat would mount. And of course, look at the nice detail on the floor mats in here. Then we have our radiator shroud, or uh, sorry, our... Um, front grille shroud and headlight mounting places. And of course this is your sus uh, front suspension. I do believe the bumper hooks up into here. Not quite sure. I have to look at those instructions again. There's the tailgate with the sunken in Chevrolet name right on the, the back of the tailgate. If we turn this over, yeah, you'll see that it's got raised letters on this side but they're in reverse, so that'll go on the back. And then, of course, look at the nice detail under here of your floor pans. A little bit soft, but you'll be able to see it underneath when you turn the car over. Okay. Next set of sprue is kind of an interesting piece of uh, parts tree here. Um, there's the steering column. These are the pleated parts for the dashboard. It's a couple little panels and things for under hood. Of course, some hoses. And this section here is the bottom of the hood. And look, I'm mean, way out here. Got this long runner going there, and long runner going there, and one out here, and this is your steering wheel. So kind of an interesting piece of sprue here. So now this part's tree contains the hood hinges, the top of the hood, these are uh, radius rods and things for your differential. Differential molded in two pieces. Then we have our spare tire here with the wheel. So that's pretty neat. And upper A-arms, shock absorbers, and our drive shaft way over there. So I've turned this around so you can get a good look here. Uh, the, the wheel is hollow in the back. So, but that's okay because you won't see it because it will be pressed up against here somewhere, and you'll be looking at it from the top bar. It'll look like this. <laughs> Something to that effect. So you don't see that that this is just a, a ghost of an image. Now if we go and look at the hood here though, you can see some pretty nice ribs under here. And of course you gotta get rid of that little button, and that one, you know, any that are under here with your number 16 Hobby Blade. Now this part's tree, we've got our engine and radiator bits. 
and of course there's our firewall and we've got our dashboard here uh, part of the radiator shroud and hood re hood catch and releases there and of course we've got our six cylinder block here left and right with the oil pan fan belts radiator fan starter motor coil horns for the hood battery uh, water pump timing chain cover license plates down here let's turn this over see if we can spot any detail well there's two pins for mounting your license plates I guess it's not really much going on back here oh there's a, a um, valve cover <laughs> got folded over okay let's take a look at that dashboard there camera to focus in. camera doesn't want to focus so anyway um, you've got some nice detail going on in here with your gauges there's those holes are for the the uh, covers that I talked about earlier go on top so you can see you can get your paintbrush and bare metal foil and everything down there hmm, not much like I'll take a photograph of this and post it up here in a second This is all part of the steering or the the wheels. Here you have your your um, locks here, and these are your backing plates for your wheels. I couldn't figure out what these were. Then I had a closer look, and I'm gonna show you in a sec. But there's your springs. Okay, so these are the front spindles for your car. They actually will be like left and right, and they're gonna fit like this. Okay. Now these funny little dot things you actually cut them off right there and there and then you cut it off right there and that's your spindle mount so that these will glue you know the these like in the instructions these will turn around and face out this way they'll go through that hole like that and then you're putting glue in here and it'll squish onto there <laughs> so it does holding the wheels in and then you've got your two pins there for your steerable wheels if you wanted you just gotta mount a rod out here you know it's interesting right? look up how to make a front wheels posable on your model car okay so this parts tree here has the front the bottom part of the front suspension the lower a arms and these radius rods are coming out here there's your uh, steering linkage and here's that roof piece. And it's got a bump going this way too, as well as overhang. So there's two pins to mount it, but you can see there's quite a bit of overhang there that they probably would not be able to mold at AMT on that roof without botching it up. So it's nice to have an additional separate roof. And you could paint this a completely different color and glue it on. So there's, saves you with your two-tone and masking. So here's the next parts tree. This is your bench seat. It doesn't flip down like I, like in the 1955 Chevy pickup trucks, but it does have these pins here to line there and there. And you can't really see it, but there is a very faint cloth pattern molded in here. Then there's your six cylinder engine components, your exhaust intake manifold, uh, your generator and your air cleaner and some other piece here <laughs> next up we've got our interior door panels and this is the back panel of the cab which if we got our cab here will glue in from behind of course there we go like that so that's what that panel is again another thing that would have been Pretty tough to mold as a one piece. Okay, now check out the detail on this. We've got a speaker grill or event grill to the outside, and then our door panels or our window <laughs> winding and door locks or whatever. You, you know what I mean. <laughs> if you got a car, you know what I mean. That's the crank for the windows. This is the pull for unlocking the door. Hooray, I win! All right, so you got these little ribs in here too, which is nice detail. You could put a two-tone color in there if you want. Paint it white with a red insert, a red with a white insert, however you want to do it. 
Let's just turn this over. So here it says, uh, 1960 Chevy Custom Fleet Side, used under license. Thank you, GM. Very nice. Okay, and then you got these sink bubble things again. You could take these off with your number 11, or number 16 hobby knife and some sandpaper, but I don't know if you will see them once the model's glued together. You're gonna have to, you know, dry fit this in and take a look. See if you can spot them and if they need to be scraped off. If not, hey, don't worry about it. You just saved yourself a job. Next, we get this wonderful exhaust pipe and muffler. Uh, I guess not too much to be said about this. That's some good detail, and it is hollow underneath here. Of course, you're not going to see that on your ever. <laughs> kind of look at the truck. But you should put some paint inside here, too, just in case you could see it, like, from the top dropping in through the uh, top of the hood or something bizarre. I don't know. Nice gray piece. And the final gray piece we're going to look at here, although it's not too good on my initial view. This is, of course, your frame. And you can see some very nice uh, bolts in there on that member. This has got the cross frame underneath here, which was popular back in the 60s, late 50s, early 60s. Started to appear about 1958, actually. They, they were um, trying to enhance perimeter frames. And of course we had a section here to remove. This is where the spare tire would mount under this bracket here. And there's a little little pin there which go into probably the center of the wheel, pardon me. And uh, again you got your little buttons here you have to take off with your number 16 hobby blade. And uh, some good detail again, of course. So here we have our chrome parts tree and we're treated to these nice four uh, chrome stock wheels with the little Chevy bow ties in there you get the paint. These are your inserts for your hood which include two vents and turn signal lights or possibly driving lights. There's the mirror, the floor shifter I believe. Kind of hard, these are upside down too. But you do get this nice Chevy bow tie up here and front bumper and rear bumpers and of course the front grill. Now if we take a look at our front grill here you can see blurrily. Along here it says Chevrolet which is nice and um, let's see on the back yeah it's got a couple of these little pinholes again you can scrape these off using your number 16 hobby blade. And now you guys may be wondering why I keep saying this number 16 hobby blade. If you're not familiar with your X-Acto knife blades, this is your typical number 11 blade. Now a number 16 looks like that. That's your number 16. So you can see how this blade is angled this way. Now if you're going to scrape off these little eyes, see how the number 11 blade, you can actually get right on there. Sorry, the number 16. You can get right on here nice and, and scrape it that way and turn it and scrape it this way and scrape it that way until this becomes completely flat. That's why I always recommend number 16 for that job. And now we have our glass components, or clear plastic. This is your rear window here, your quad headlights are up in here, and your front windshield with the side mounted uh, glass in there. And these here are your sun visors, so you can paint those over. And of course we have our red tail lights here as well. Now these are not molded like that, this is actually separate, see? <laughs> but, uh, they are pretty nice, nice detail. There's some little vents on here, just to go with that tail light. 
Now we get into our tires. These are actually older AMT tires. I do believe my dad's 1969 Buick Riviera model kit had these in them. These are Firestone tires. They're Firestone Supremes. That's upside down, of course. They've got some nice uh, sidewall pattern here. You can paint white walls in there where it says Firestone Supreme. It is sunken. And these actually have ooh, some rib detail that's all blurry, but it runs this way. They're uh, straight lines. They're not wavy or anything like that. And boy, the guy downstairs is doing some vacuuming. <laughs> okay, so there you go. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet, which has just license plates. So you get these blue and orange ones that say Fleet. And then from Nebraska, 30-4878. And these Colorado ones that say AM0816. These are kind of nice because the only one that's sort of awkward is the one that says Fleet. But I've seen these things and they'll say 1960 Chevy inside there for the numbers and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm glad that it's not that kind of decal sheet, that it actually is the proper license plates. And that will conclude our review of the AMT 1960 Chevy Custom Fleet Side. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review of the AMT 1960 Chevrolet Fleetside pickup. And I hope that you can find one out there or that round two starts to recreate these things and re-pop them out for all of us in the modeling community. Because this is one amazing, cool little pickup truck. Now, if you enjoy watching our videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Tune in next week because we're going to be looking at the 1961 Ford Ranchero kit. And that one will be really cool too. So until next time, keep your wheels on the road as you go off to the farm. <laughs>